Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We continue to see the Madden Julian Oscillation move through the Indian Ocean towards Phase 3. And that looks as if it could be somewhat the kiss of death with regards to the current spell of colder conditions. We continue to see this battle between Atlantic and Arctic Air. The UK in the battleground. It's very, very marginal with regards to snow. And uh, we'll look at the details in just a second. I have noticed a couple of comments, and I know, of course, it is back to troll season once again when the winter kicks in. But there has been no hype up until now, certainly, with regards to this uh, current uh, spell of cold weather. Nothing exceptional. Last year, December, of course, was a lot colder than what we're seeing at the moment anyway we can still continue to see the evolution of the pattern it may start to turn colder as we move into the december period but certainly based on the man julian oscillation going uh, towards phases three and then into the null phase it looks as if that will uh, allow the return of uh, atlantic air in a more bodily fashion as opposed to this kind of flirt between air coming in from the uh, the northeast and air coming up from the southwest as well here I think the milder will, of course, eventually win out. But, uh, you know, I've never been overly enthusiastic with regards to snow prospects with this current spell of chilly conditions. And it is below average, so it is a cold spell to end the month of November and begin the month of December and meteorological winter here. But there has been a lot of things going on across Europe at the moment. We've had some uh, fairly serious snow and cold in easternmost parts of Europe here. By the way, this is the latest uh, CFSV2 for the month of December. Quite interesting stuff, actually. We've got that negative NAO signal. We've got the trough underneath here. But notice we've not got that southward displacement of the high. So we are not shutting down the Atlantic. So what we could see on the face of it, based on purely this alone, we might see uh, a fairly wet but chilly December period. These are the 850 temperatures off the same model here, indicating below average 850s or 5,000 foot level temperatures across Ireland, Northern Ireland and the northern half of the UK. Average across England and Wales, warmer than average if you notice here across the bulk of Europe here. But uh, certainly that uh, northern blocking over Greenland would displace the storm track a little bit further south, getting systems coming in from a southwest direction. And I do think that we... Um, could see a fairly mobile December overall. So let's have a look and see what's going on across the continent at the moment here. We are seeing uh, the core of coldest air, Scandinavia in the central and eastern portions of Europe here. We have had a bit of a pullback over the weekend with regards to cold and snow in uh, the west of Europe here. But as that cold regroups and comes back into play, we will see the uh, the increased potential for some snow at least anyway this was the satellite image here captured by copernicus it's a sentinel three satellite and you can see a swathe of snow we had of course horrendous conditions around some of the black sea coasts of ukraine russia and uh, we did see a swathe of snow up the eastern side of romania through moldova and into ukraine blizzard conditions hurricane force winds battering waves and near record breaking low pressure for this region of the world and you can see this was the scene unfortunately from moldova two people died in a car buried in snow drifts so quite a tragic situation here the capital of moldova kishinov has been seeing the first significant snow now this comes after all-time record breaking end of october temperatures temperatures in the 30s remarkable stuff actually uh, back at the end of october so a big contrast a big swing between uh you know full-fledged summer at the in the middle portion of autumn versus proper winter conditions as we end autumn finland experienced its coldest november night in 21 years that was a uh, i think yesterday morning where the temperature hit 34 minus 34.2 celsius and that is the coldest temperature for the month of November, at least, since 2002, when we had a low of minus 38. That's according to Mika Rantanen, based in Finland. Um, so, uh, so interesting stuff. This was the scene 
uh, in um, Estonia. So again, heavy snow, blizzard conditions, proper winter weather and significant snowfall. This is where winter and the cold spell is at its worst. And that, of course, is a proper spell of cold and snow to start the uh, early portions of uh, winter. And this was the same as in Kishinev or Kishinev in Moldova here. So, of course, no stranger to winter in Eastern Europe. And this was uh, captured on the Turkish coast. Massive waves, storm surge, flooding and very messy conditions in this region also here this was the same in parts of turkey also so you can see here this is the 850 temperatures of the gfs model and you can see the battle here core colder stir over scandinavia multiple areas of low pressure dancing around that is dictating the flow of the cold versus the warm and you can see that we are in marginal cold air this upcoming saturday here but notice that there is milder air to the southwest, always kind of clinging on to the southwestern half of the UK and Ireland here. Areas of low pressure moving in, and you can see that eventually it kind of winds out. But notice the latest run of the GFS towards the end of week one into week two of December, so a long way off, of course, and I would take this very much with a pinch of salt. But you can see here that there is a, a secondary or third push of cold air. That is very cold air, in fact coming in from an easterly direction and again you've got that battle between warm and cold that mjo it would favor the atlantic winning the battle between warm and cold here let's have a look and see what the the ecmwf is indicating with the 850 temperatures and see the contrast here so before we look at this actually we know that the colder air is winning back in again we've got moderate colder coming in from an east to northeasterly direction snow showers uh, blowing across that warm, uh, warm, relatively warm North Sea waters here. In terms of cold, temperatures middle and second half of this work week struggling to get much above freezing. Most parts of the UK, even so to an extent Ireland also, but there's always that little bit of milder air over Ireland in particular. But it's going to vary significantly. Cloud cover, breeze, will dictate how cold temperatures get by night time we could flirt with minus eight minus nine celsius in the coldest areas especially if we manage to get a temporary covering of snow uh, but daytime temperatures generally two to five celsius uk wide locally we are going to see ice days temperatures not getting above the freezing mark throughout the course of the day and we'll see how cold nighttime temperatures get this is the ECMWF 850 temperature. So, of course, this is a good barometer in terms of looking at how cold the air mass is that we're dealing with. And like I said, when you've not got a particularly cold column, you're then having a hard time getting snow to low levels here, especially in the current situation with the Atlantic. And time of the year is against us as well. But notice here, this is a, an area of low pressure move in from the southwest. This is the late part of the weekend. So up until the late part of the weekend, we've got that northeasterly flow continuing to reinforce the chill. But notice the ECMWF towards middle and second half of next week, 6th and 7th of December, we've got the southwesterlies coming back into play one, once again. And this does correlate quite nicely with the MJO rotating towards the maritime continent region here. Looking at the UKV model here, this is, of course, uh, the precipitation, both in terms of liquid and frozen. You can see that we have got that uh, uh, blustery showers moving in from an east to northeasterly direction. We will see accumulations over high ground of northeastern England and eastern and central Scotland. Continuing to play through the loop here, there is not a whole lot going on, really. You know, it's just that chilly east northeasterly flow continues to dominate the pattern through the middle and second half of this work week here plenty of showers blown in across more northern areas of the uk then we may start to see a little pep up of the snow shower activity with colder air digging in we've got the greatest chance of seeing any accumulating snow at low levels during the overnight period when we've not got any uh, incoming solar radiation but you notice here that the models have backed away from any true snow across southern areas of the UK thanks to the low it, taking a further south track so we're losing that source of moisture coming in 
from a, a southwesterly direction colliding with the cold air. So we just stay in a moderately cold pattern as we end the month of November, begin the month of December here. Another reinforcing aspect to this is the 850 temperatures off the GFS ensemble for the for London. You can see here that we're firmly below average temperatures in the means anyway, flirting with minus five to minus six, minus seven at 850 millibars. Then as we move into the first couple of days of December, which of course is the weekend, that is when the air mass bottoms out at its coldest levels. Then you notice here that we trend back towards neutral, back towards the average, which is around zero Celsius above London at 850 millibars through into the second week of December. So it looks as if there is a lot of um a lot of backing to the return of the Atlantic into week two of December. But we'll wait and see what happens. There may be a delay, there may be a change in the model output as we go through the next several days here. Let's go back to the UKV model and look at snow cover here. This is snow depth in centimeters and you can see the east and northeasterly wind, nothing of uh, organized system snow, but more just a cold flow coming over warmer than average sea surface temperatures. That will allow, as expected, hill snow to accumulate here. Parts of the uh, Scottish borders down into the northeast of England here, we will see accumulating snow. And you can see it, it, it actually starts to build up uh, to a reasonable fashion over the Grampians, over the Cairngorms as we progress through the rest of this work week here and extending a little bit further south over the Pennines, over the North York Moors, the Yorkshire Dales, possibly down into the Peak District as well, if we're fortunate enough, uh, parts of North Wales, Anglia, East Anglia, um, East Anglia, <laughs> Anglesey, that's it. Uh, we will see possible snow over high ground and we've got a little bit of a snow covering across the high ground either to the west or the southwest of the Dublin area. That's not too bad. We are getting a few centimetres, but again, it's mainly a high ground feature. So we'll watch this space. In terms of overnight temperatures, in fact, let's look at daytime maximums. We looked at overnight day temperatures the last time. You can see temperatures through the course of this afternoon struggling. And then as we progress into the overnight period, the temperatures take a tumble. Where winds are lightest, skies are clearest, we will see temperatures drop minus 4, minus 5, minus 6 locally here. Then as we press into the day on Wednesday, you can see here that there is little in the way of recovery of those temperatures here. Even as we progress towards the 1300, uh, 1400, temperatures are sub-freezing across parts of northern England and across many parts of Scotland here with this situation. Then as we progress into the day on Thursday, you can see here after a cold night with clear skies, light winds in many areas, we do not see much recovery in the temperatures. This is the 1500 uh, Z and temperatures are struggling at uh, three, four Celsius at the very best here. I do appreciate there is uh, adverts popping up at the bottom of the screen that's not particularly great it's cutting off the southern half of the uk sorry about that i did see the comment making mention of that not intentional um but you can see that we will see temperatures across southern areas of the uk struggling three four celsius at very best and of course sub freezing during the overnight period here i think towards the weekend that is where we're going to see the overnight temperatures bottom out like i say minus seven minus eight possibly minus nine especially where there is lying snow so we'll wait and see what happens with regards to the, the period as we go forward let's have a look at the cfs v2 weeklies and see what they're showing upcoming seven days a deep negative over the heart of central northern europe and week two we've still got the negative in place here but i think we're starting to open the door a little bit more to the atlantic then even more so towards the period 12th through the 19th of december possible response to that uh, phase two and the three of the MJO. We've got the negative now out towards the west, positive over Europe here. That would flood the majority of the continent with mild uh, ocean air. Then as we move towards the period of Christmas, that is certainly a mild looking theme and something that I would buy into if I'm being honest. Precipitation wise, upcoming seven days, week two wetter than average, week three wetter than average, and towards the end of the period, slightly wetter than average conditions looking finally at the two meter temperature anomalies here 
upcoming seven days cooler than average then we start to see a turnaround taking place as we go towards the middle portion of the month thanks for watching be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll see you again tomorrow